Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and for some reason when you go upstairs backwards it looks really glitchy. Anyways, welcome back to my survival series. Last episode we bedrock proofed a lot of stuff in the world, and now the world should be entirely bedrock proof except for converter bugs. So that means that the elevator should convert correctly, and the Mesa Temple should convert correctly, and I actually tested it in between episodes, and they both still work after conversion. There are still bugs though, like my dogs and this purple pillar, but of course those are going, I hope at least, hopefully those are going to be fixed soon. And then there's only a few more things I'm going to be waiting for before we switch to bedrock. And, however, we're not doing that in this episode, because we're doing something that I've been putting off for a long time. And that is the thing that I started last Halloween. It's July, and I started this in October last year, and I finally come up with a good idea for the pumpkin pit. So originally I was going to build a giant pixel art pumpkin, but that was a terrible idea and I'm very glad I've abandoned it by now. So I came up with a much better idea. We're going to build a fancy building out of acacia wood because acacia wood is orange, and it's also the only wood I haven't used in construction other than oak wood, which is too basic already. As you can see, we've got dark oak wood, diamond knight's house is jungle, the, uh, actually wait, this uses dark oak wood, and spruce wood, then farm central uses dark oak, that uses jungle, and birch is used in the birch blacksmiths, so, and that, uh, skeleton stable. So this thing, acacia wood, the last one left, and I realized acacia is orange, just like pumpkins, so we should use it in the pumpkin pit. And that's how we got here. So, it's gonna hold all of the pumpkin mobs, and they're actually still trapped in this thing. We're not gonna be moving them today, because that's a long project that's gonna require minecart rails and sun protection. Actually, wait, no, we don't need sun protection because they've got, uh, pumpkins on. Because that's how pumpkins work, they block out the sun. Which is actually really convenient, but we still have to get them there, so we'll probably use minecarts anyway. So, let's begin. This is the design that we're going to re be repeating, um... Let's see, it would be it would be 12, but one of them is the door, so we're going to be repeating it 11 times. Then it's already built once, so we got to actually do it 10 times. And in between episode, when I was setting this up, I actually realized that this area was not 16 by 16. It was originally meant to be pixel art, right? So that's why we built it as 16 by 16. But then when I actually built the 16 by 16 square, it didn't fit correctly. I built it like 15 by 17, and it, it was just sad. I also like this design quite a bit, guys, because it uses different depths, so it doesn't look flat, even though all the blocks are on the same level, technically. Now, this isn't something that's super interesting to commentate over just building, so I'm going to build in the background while I talk about the way that I think we can make Bedrock Edition much better. So, recently, or at least, guys, you should know that I've been pretty into making resource packs on Bedrock Edition. I've made quite a few, such as, like, No More Marketplace Notifications, and Music Plus is super popular, actually, over 7,000, probably over 8,000 downloads now. That's way more than I was expecting. But there's still the issue that, like, Bedrock Edition's visuals and menus, those will always bug me, and it doesn't seem like the developers are too, I don't know, determined, really, to fix them immediately. So... I've found that there's a little community in Minecraft, Bedrock Edition, that makes resource packs. I'm kind of part of it, not really. I'm, like, on the outside of it, basically. And now, there's Kryzart EX. He makes lots of menus and shader stuff. Then there's also, um, Hoff Human. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Half Human, Hoff Human, whatever. And he also, she, I don't know, they also help build the packs... And specifically, the one that I'm waiting for that looks really, really good is the console UI pack. It basically is, its goal is to emulate how console edition looks exactly. And I've helped contribute a little bit, like I've given them menu sounds and button textures, but mostly it's all on them. So that pack is going to help a lot because it makes the menus look like console edition and just get used much better. They have sounds and stuff much, much better than before. Then, there's also the fact that there's a different guy I found, I don't remember the name right now, but he is working on making a pack that changes the gamma of the game to look exactly like console edition. Like, I saw some screenshots of it. It looks exactly how the Xbox One edition is. And by the way, guys, if you're wondering why we're still building this pattern, even though there's a mountain right there, I am too. But I think the actual reason is because we're going to have to do some terraforming, because I don't want this building to be part of the mountain anymore. Originally, that was the idea with the pumpkin. It would be part of the mountain. But, uh, not anymore. 
So anyways, guys, this guy's Gamma Correction Pack looks really good. It's going to fix the visuals to look like Bedrock Edition. So then all that would be left is like miscellaneous textures, which, what do you know, I have a resource pack for that. Java Aspects is very good because it also changes textures and basically everything else that's not covered in the other two packs. So if we combine Music Plus, which fixes the music to be like console edition, Java Aspects, which is like sounds and textures and stuff like that, colors, you know, then we get the Vanilla Deluxe 4J DUI, at least that's what it's currently called, it might have a different name, by Chrysart EX and Hoff Human, that will change the menus to be fixed, and then the last pack that fixes the gamma will make the blocks look correct. So, if we combine everything, we can basically make Bedrock Edition, like Console Edition, but with the aquatic features, with crossplay, and it's so, so cool. This is why, guys, custom resource packs are awesome. Now, there's still one hurdle to get over that I haven't really mentioned yet, which is that you can't get custom resource packs on Xbox. Sort of. Here's my plan to actually get a custom resource pack on Xbox. You can't get them in your global resources, but if you have a world that's on a realm and you play the realm, you can download all the resource packs on it. However, they don't get added to global resources Instead, they get added to the cached data because they don't want you to use custom resource packs in your own world. They want you to buy the store ones, which is understandable, I guess, but still a bit disappointing. Especially since they said that they would let you import custom ones. But we can upload a world with the four resource packs on it to a realm, then download it on the Xbox. In fact, guys, I've been saving my realms trial for a very long time for this moment. So whenever we want to convert over, I can just activate my Realms Trial, because I still have it gone. Going, I guess, not gone. And then I, we can also convert the pillars to Bedrock and send it over to Agent Mindstorm, because that's going to be a whole other hassle, getting it off Flash Drive Man's profile and onto mine. There's just a lot of problems, basically, guys, but I'm working through them so that we can convert to Bedrock Edition and still have a good experience, because I want to convert. It's just not in a state I currently enjoy, but they're very obviously pushing us there with, you know, the limitations on everything for this version. Like, it looks good, the menus are good, but eventually I'm gonna have to switch. And how have I turned this video about building the pumpkin pit into another discussion about Bedrock Edition? What is it with me doing that? I do that a lot. So anyways, guys, with the Halloween thing... Actually, wait, I'm building this out of the wrong block. Oh no, this needs to be built out of acacia logs. That was part of my plan, I'm gonna have, like, acacia log floor. It's gonna be really cool. We also have a basement in my one that I built in my testing world. I should just show you that sometime. I need to just show you guys my updated version of my testing world, because I showed it before. It basically just had a Farm Central thing in it. But now, it's got so much more. Like, way more future stuff and current stuff. Like, it's got the building that we're going to build around the nether portal. It's got that complete. Now, the only reason we actually haven't gone ahead and done that already is because the issue is... Nether warts take forever to farm, and you need nine to make one block, and that's the primary block that I use in the build. So we just need a lot. Also, guys, this uses so much acacia wood, so how did I get all this wood? <laughs> it's an interesting story, actually. I went super far south. Wait, was it south or east? It was southeast. No, wait. This is south. This is east. Yeah, I went southeast this direction and just went to all the savannas and tore down every single acacia tree. So there's a lot of savannas in this world now that just don't have any trees whatsoever. Which I think is a funny thing, like if you would go there you expect to get acacia wood and then there's just nothing. Also we need to put jack-o'-lanterns in here before I forget. And I can't get up on top of the wall so we'll just start the next one. Problem solving with Agent Mindstorm. Oh my gosh, I almost failed the par parkour too. So these stairs are very nice. They help with the depth because they use the curved stairs and also guys, I don't know how we're going to integrate water logging into the Guardian Farm, but I do know something we're going to integrate into the Guardian Farm, and I'm just going to say it right here. It's magma bubbles, because they suck you down and they kill you. There is actually a bug on Bedrock Edition right now that causes Guardians to float in the air when they've fallen for too long. I've reported it, other people have reported it. Hopefully it's going to be fixed because it just breaks everything. Like, I, I have screenshots, I would link them, but I'm not going to because... So, oh my gosh, it's getting dark. Oh no, 
We don't want it to get dark. Okay, let's finish this wall quickly. This wall segment section area. Oh, and am I, am I out of cobblestone stairs? Oh, no, I have a whole nother stack. Whole other stack or whole nother stack? I don't actually know which one it is. Is it whole nother stack or whole other stack? I need to grammar better. I really do. But this is actually quite a nice pattern. Oh, I forgot to do it on this wall, too. Problems have been created. And oh my gosh, we have the perfect amount of acacia planks to... I mean, fences, not planks. The perfect amount of acacia fences to complete these two. And then we have to go somewhere else. Now, guys, something else really cool about the aquatic update on Bedrock is that they should hopefully soon... Why does the game look so dark? Is my gamma turned down? No, my gamma's at 50%. I don't know, maybe it's just on my screen, but for some reason it looks super dark. Maybe the TV gamma got turned down. I don't know. Whatever. Let's sleep in the bed. And in the morning, we'll craft more acacia fences, to be honest. That's that's probably what we're actually going to do. So where's the crafting table? Here's my crafting table. I really need to, like, expand on my house more. We just had a few episodes in a row where I was obsessed with this house, and then I just... I just wasn't. I just stopped. I don't know what happened to building this house, by the way, guys, because I still want to do it. But I now have a new opinion, which is that since 1.13 or Aquatic Update or whatever, the best houses are entirely filled with water. You might think that's an insane claim, but let me try to persuade you. Can I persuade you in, let's see, nine minutes or less that the optimal house design in Minecraft is entirely filled with water? Yes, I can. So in 1.13, they have added a new block known as the Conduit. If you don't know what it does, it basically acts like a beacon, but underwater, and it uses prismarine instead of blocks, like diamond and stuff. So beacons are powered, I mean conduits, are powered by prismarine. So you put a few conduits underwater, and then they give you the effect called conduit power. What is this mysterious conduit power effect, I hear you ask in a very overdramatic of a voice? Well, conduit power allows you to basically have underwater night vision in addition to water breathing and haste all the time when you're around the conduit. It also kills drowned that spawn near. Are you not sold on it yet? Well, if you're not sold, then you can also know that it's basically a super easily farmable resource because you can't really infinitely farm it, but parts of the sea in treasure chests are so easy to get because treasure chests are absolutely plentiful. You just have to go to either ruins or shipwrecks, especially shipwrecks, and you find a buried treasure map almost every single time. So with this here buried treasure map that you have now, Mr. Pirate Man, uh, can you make this parkour jump? I think I did something like this in either the, either the pillars or in the last episode. Yeah, I, there we go. So, the conduit is basically super easy to get, because you just need to either fish farm, like, you can't actually do a fish farm in Bedrock, but just farm fishing for a while. Or, your other better option is to go out into the ocean, hunt for drowned that hold nautilus shells, and kill them. You only need eight nautilus shells and one heart of the sea, heart of the, 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 heart of the sea, to make a conduit. Once you've crafted the conduit, you just place it down, you get some prismarine blocks around it, and then it gives you the conduit power for a while. All this is great, but how does it relate to our base? I hear you begging in the background, hoping that I will stop talking sometime soon. You're not in luck. Well, the reason that this is all related is because if you put conduit power in a base filled with water, you will always be able to see, except you have the added bonus of basically being able to fly. There's no disadvantages of water that come with that, except possibly that it breaks redstone, but how many people are using redstone as decoration in their house? You should put that stuff in watertight tunnels, come on now. Also in bedrock, redstone repeaters are waterproof, so that's a cool feature right there. But we're getting off topic. There's n pretty much no downside to having water in your house post 1.13, since all blocks can be waterlogged. But there are upsides, which is that you can fly up and down, basic. I mean, I say fly, but it's really swim up and down. So you can have vertical floors that don't use ladders or stairs or anything ugly like that. So possibly, guys, what we could do for our ender house here is fill it entirely with water once we convert to bedrock. And then with my crazy water-filled conduit house, we can go up and down without having to worry about having ladders. Because that's one of the biggest problems in the house. Here, actually, let me go over and show you. Uh, the biggest problem with our house 
is that it's ugly looking because of the stairs. So this, you can see how I try to use these cool styled blocks things, but it just doesn't really work. So we got the big block, then we got this block here, this huge block just for stairs. If we didn't have stairs, it would look so much cooler because we could just swim up. This block here, also stairs. Stairs also take up a lot of room, like, just look at this. Look at this weird staircase. It looks ugly, and it functions way slower than just swimming upward would. So, with a water-filled, conduit-powered base, you will have no mobs to deal with. You will also have fish swimming around, which would look pretty... What if you built a house in a warm ocean biome and filled it with water? You'd have so many cool fish swimming around. Okay. So, guys, have I convinced you that a water house is the best type of house? Because there's almost no downsides, you can fly, and you don't have to worry about mobs because, you know, 99% of mobs can't swim. They either sink or they drown and turn into drowned, but then the conduit will take care of them. It's amazing, really, how a simple item like the conduit can turn something like a terrible idea, such as a water-filled house. What the heck? Who would ever think of that? To Wow! That's actually pretty smart. And look at this, guys. We've almost gotten all the way around. The entire outside of this building is almost complete. In between episodes, I'll probably work on fleshing out the inside a bit more, and then we can move the mobs in here. I'm so glad we're finally making progress on this project from literally almost a year ago. It's been, what, eight months? I, I can't count. Let's see. October? No, let's count backwards. October, September, August, June... No. July. So, yeah. It's basically been nine months, almost nine months, since we've even touched this project. But that, that ends today. Now we've reset the timer, so in the next few months, when we're building this house very slowly, it'll eventually be done, and then we can say we have our pumpkin project from last year done. This year on Halloween, by the way, the Halloween special is probably going to be a lot like last year's, because I still need to hunt for more of those mobs. I did say that I could turn back the date, but that's a bit cheaty. And I don't think you're supposed to turn back the date when you're hunting for uh, pumpkin mobs. Also, maybe by the time that Halloween rolls around, we'll be on Bedrock Edition and mobs won't even spawn with jack-o'-lanterns on Halloween. Which is also worrying. Also, jack-o'-lanterns don't render on mob heads. So there's a lot of issues with Bedrock and our pumpkin pit. But I've reported them once again. I try to report all the bugs because bugs are bad. We should... Come on. Chop, chop. We don't need to, like, debate this. Bugs are a bad thing. And where are my doors? What doors was I going to use? Should I use acacia doors? I'll just use acacia doors. Um, acacia doors? Boom. Boom, boom. There we go. Two acacia doors. And now the decoration for this part is, I'm pretty sure, just, like, cobblestone walls like this. And then cobblestone stairs upside down here. I did something wrong. There's supposed to be stairs on the bottom. Okay, that makes more sense. Cobblestone stairs like that? No, those look a bit ugly. Let's put them sideways. Uh, like this. There we go. Then maybe this could do like this. Mm, not 100% on how this will go. Because I didn't actually... I don't remember this part, to be completely and 100% honest. I don't remember how I built this in my plan world. So we're going off, like, either a mix of bad memory and sort of this is what I want it to look like. Also, how do I have this much stone? I thought... I don't think I really mind that much, did I? I just broke, like, a few of these things. Whatever. Here we go, guys. The outside is done. This is all I wanted to do today. These one-day episode projects that we actually finish in the episode are so great when they're done. So, guys, that is the end of this episode. We've done it. Let's just take a quick look around at how much better this area looks now that we have it like this. I wanted it to kind of look like a maximum security prison, too, which I think we've pulled off pretty well here. Yeah, look at this. It looks very good, and then the inside's going to hold all the mobs. We're just going to have to do some terraforming on the outside. But for now, that is the end of this episode. So I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.